Hello, I'm Jeremy Fry. I am the senior pastor here at Advent Lutheran Church. I want to thank you for taking the time to participate in the following worship recording. Our mission here at Advent is to be the followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. For us, that means connecting people to God and connecting people to people. We serve and love our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we go out and we serve and love each other with the same love that God has for us. Everyone who walks through the doors of Advent and participates with us needs to know that they are a child of God, wonderfully and beautifully made in God's image. No matter your race, your gender, your sexual orientation or identity, your social economical status, no matter where you, where you come from and who you are, you are loved by God and you are welcome to come and participate in worship and leadership in any of our ministries. Our ministries happen because of the generosity of our people. If you would like any more information about the ministries here at Advent Lutheran Church, how you would like to get involved, or information on how to give to these ministries, please visit our website, adventbrevard.org. Thank you, and God bless. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Our theme for today is hope, and as I was thinking through this word in our text for today, it occurred to me that the word hope has kind of gotten really light over the generations of the English language, to the point where now 
it, it really kind of means, well, it means something very different than what we're talking about for this season of Advent and in the scriptures. You know, hope nowadays is like you really hope your favorite football team will win. You really hope that the person who is ill is going to get better. Um, you, it's like uh, something that you really want to happen, but really you have no control of the circumstances, so you hope it'll happen. You know, it's a little bit more than want, but not much, right? Um, so if you think of that as our definition of the word hope that we go with uh, for the moment, because that's kind of the common definition, um, you'll see that our passage for today, our text for today, doesn't have a lot of hope in it. It's not a very hopeful passage at all. Uh, for example, I am the father of four kids. Three of them are girls. I pictured one of my girls coming to me and saying, I mean, you know, can you imagine being the mother of Mary? I mean, the mother of Mary, you know, the mother and father of Mary. I picture uh, one of my daughters coming to me and saying, um, Dad, I've got some really good news and some very difficult news that you're probably not going to understand. Um, first, the hard news. Uh, I'm pregnant and Joseph is not the father. But here's the good news. It's from the Holy Spirit. Now, we all know how, where babies come from. Is there ever a time when it doesn't happen that way? It's not like you say, well, sometimes it happens this way, sometimes it happens that way. No, no, it always happens the same way. So would you be hopeful as Mary's mom or dad when Mary came to you and said, I'm expecting Joseph's not the father, but it's from the Holy Spirit. I would not be hopeful. I would be devastated because in those days, the very best case scenario for them would be their family would be shamed for generations and Mary would be banished from the village. That'd be the best case scenario. Not very hopeful by our definition of hope, our modern definition. And then you think of Joseph, her fiance. Same kind of thing. Where is the hope in that? Um, Mary comes to him and says, Joseph, I'm with child. Obviously, it's not yours. But it's from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph is a good man. He's a generous man. He's an understanding man. And so uh, I imagine at that moment, uh, he's thinking two things. My wife has been unfaithful, and she's lost her mind. <laughs> so he's going to dismiss her quietly. Not much hope there. Where is the hope in that for Joseph? You know, the kind of hope we think about is the things we want for the future. And, you know, that's not what Mary's mom and dad wanted. That's not what Joseph wanted. Uh, where is the hope in that? Um, but then we get to the biblical kind of hope. The hope that is not just a little more than a want. Uh, because we don't hear about it in Matthew's gospel, but we know what happened to Mary. We know that God spoke to her through the angel and said, Mary, you are going to be with child from the Holy Spirit, and this is going to be God's Messiah who will save your people and save the world. And as difficult, because Mary knew all these consequences too. Mary knew what this would cost her. And I still remember what she said. Here I am. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. That's hope. That's biblical hope. That's spirit-filled hope. That's what the season of Advent kind of hope is about. Because it's not something she had in hand, right? It's not something that she could see and touch and know and have to possess. It was a promise of God. God's promise. And so for her, she took on the biblical, spirit-filled kind of hope, which basically says, I don't see it yet, I don't have it yet, but God has promised it, so I'm going to live my life as if it is already so. That's the kind of hope we're talking about. It's not just wanting something over which we have no control. It's living as if something we... God has promised us is already true. And, and that's what Mary did. And Joseph, the same thing. You know, when the angel came to him 
in the dream, there was no ambiguity. There was no question. The angel didn't say, well, you know, this might turn out okay. Maybe you should marry her. Might be all right. The angel came to Joseph in the dream and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. He had reason to be afraid. He knew what would happen if he did. He would be shamed. He would be ridiculed. He would be humiliated. He knew that. But the angel said, don't be afraid because this child is from the Holy Spirit. And this child will save his people from their sins. He will save the world from their sins. And so Joseph also acted on God's promise, not because he had something in hand, not because uh, he could see some kind of proof, but because God had promised it. Um, Joseph lived from that moment on as if it were already true. That's the kind of hope we're talking about. Do you see what I mean? It's a different kind of hope. So what do we do with this? Um, I think during this season of Advent, uh, we have so much for which to be grateful because we are now post-resurrection people. We live in the joy and the fulfillment of this promise. That's why during the season of Advent, one of the things we do is prepare to celebrate Christmas. Because at Christmas time, we celebrate the fulfillment of this beautiful promise. And because of this promise, we can say right now, today, every day, God is with us. The God of the whole universe took on flesh and came among us, lived, died, rose again. So that when I look out on this room, what do I see? I see children of God, eternal beings of love and light and joy because of what God has done. Uh, we've seen the promise fulfilled, and that's a beautiful thing. And then also, during this Advent season, um, we prepare for Jesus coming again, because that's another promise of God. It's a promise. Jesus said, I will come back to you. I will be coming again. And I have to admit, this is a hard one for me. Um, I'm a Lutheran pastor. I've been one for about almost 30 years, and, uh, and I was an engineer before that. And uh, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus made that promise, approximately. And I'm kind of saying, tick-tock, Lord, you know. <laughs> 2,000 years. Any time now. Um, it's hard to wait on a promise like that. But I take hope in Mary and Joseph uh, when God promised them and they lived their lives uh, on the truth of that promise even before they had it in their hands. And I think that's what God, God is calling us to do in this promise that we prepare for during this Advent season, Jesus coming again. We don't know when it's going to be. We don't know if it'll be in our lifetime or a thousand years, and it doesn't matter. We are greatly blessed when we live our lives uh, with the hope of that promise guiding us. And last... Uh, this Advent season is one of preparation. It's different from Lent. You know, Lent is a repentant season, a solemn season where you're kind of digging through the weeds in your life and kind of trying to get back on track. But Advent is a different kind of preparation. It's much more like preparing for a party, preparing for a Christmas party when you've got your family coming and you've got your friends coming and you've got a guest of honor who's coming. And so you want to spruce up the place and cook the best food and, and put up the decorations because uh, there's going to be a joyful time of celebration and remembrance because we've received the promises of God and the promises of God are to come. So during this Advent season, um, let's prepare for this great feast. Let's prepare our hearts for Jesus coming again because even if the end of history as we know it doesn't come in our time, one thing I know for sure is that according to the span of time, Jesus is coming for you and me very soon. Very soon. So let's take this season uh, to fill our hearts with hope and to prepare to see the promises of God fulfilled. Amen.
Please stand for the hymn of the day. who dwells with us in Jesus, and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.